Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video, I'll be talking about how I studied for the ADAT and also how my ADAT knockout scores compared with the real ADAT. First, I kind of want to talk a little bit about why you might want to take the ADAT or what kind of candidates would need to take this exam. So the ADAT stands for the Advanced Dental Admissions Test, and it really has nothing to do with the dental admissions test that you take to get into dental school. But I would say one of the most common reasons people will take it is applying to endodontic residency programs programs. And then also sometimes international students will try to strengthen their applications by taking the ADAT. Um, there are other residency programs that accept the ADAT or require the ADAT even, but it's definitely not really that common in other specialties compared to endodontics. And the reason that I personally took the ADAT was because I'm currently a fourth year dental student and I wanted to apply to endodontic residency straight out of dental school. So I took the ADAT at the end of my third year of dental school, which was in the beginning of 2021. And I thought that it would be a good way to help strengthen my application. I definitely don't think that it's a requirement to take the ADAT if you're applying to endodontic residency programs. However, there are certain programs that do require it. So it's important to be aware of that when you're selecting programs to apply to. I also would say that for someone who's applying directly out of dental school, in lieu of having that extra clinical experience that other applicants would have, taking the ADAT can be helpful to make your application stand out. In my case, it's hard to tell looking back how much of an impact did the ADAT have for my acceptance to an endodontic residency program. However, I do think that it probably did help to at least get some more interviews. When I was applying, I did email program directors across the country to ask them about taking the ADAT, and the answers ranged from programs not looking at it at all to them requiring the ADAT. So it's not the only factor that they're going to be looking at. For all, I would say that taking the exam can be beneficial, but it's not the be all end all for your application. This is the ADAT testing schedule and you can kind of see the breakdown for the exam. With that said, if you are planning on taking the ADAT, I would definitely recommend that you go to your year's ADAT guide and then that'll give you more complete information and updated information about the ADAT. Not only can you see the breakdown of the exam, but you can also see the topics that are tested and I think that you'll find it really helpful at least to understand what the exam is all about. But basically the exam is composed of three major parts there's the biomedical sciences, which is composed of 80 questions. The clinical sciences is another 80 questions. And then there's a portion on data research interpretation and evidence-based dentistry that is made up of 40 questions. And so the exam is really not crazy long compared to if you're used to taking part one and part two or integrated boards, but it definitely does cover a lot of material. And so it is going to require substantial preparation. So here's a list of some of the programs that require the ADAT. This is not a complete list, it's just part of the list, so I would um, do a Google search of programs requiring the ADAT in order to see the PDF of the complete list. With that said, it is recommended to contact individual programs for the most up-to-date info because this list is constantly changing and it's not always going to be the most accurate, so I would make sure that you email individual program directors for the schools that you're planning to apply to if you have any concern as to whether or not they require the ADAT. In terms of what's considered a good ADAT score, the scores can range from 200 to 800, but for example in 2020, no one got below 280 and no one scored above 670. So realistically, it looks like the range in 2020 was from 280 being the lowest and 670 being the highest, with an average of 508 as the overall ADAT score. With that said, you can also see the average averages for the individual sections. So the highest among them was the biomedical sciences, and then the lowest was the clinical sciences. And here's some data from 2016 to 2020 of overall ADAT scores. And you can see that it's a pretty normal distribution with the mean read at around 510. So I studied for the ADAT for around three months, and I took the exam at the end of 
April 2021, which was the end of my third year of dental school, I first wanted to start by doing a content review. So for the biomedical sciences, I used the NBDE part one book by BMB Dental, but that's just because that was the book that I had laying around for when I studied for part one. I did think it was very useful in preparing for the ADAP, but you could also use a different book if that's what you have. For clinical sciences, I used the mental dental YouTube video. Specifically, I used the playlist that's made for NBDE part two. I also used his videos when I was studying for the part two exam, which for me personally, I tried to coordinate taking the ADAT and part two at a similar time. So I took the ADAT and then a couple of weeks later, I took part two. And now that part one and part two have been replaced with integrated boards, I would definitely recommend trying to take the ADAT at a similar time to when you take integrated boards. And for biostatistics, I have a series of YouTube videos that I personally watched to prepare for this section. And then for all of the sections, I use the ADAT Knockout website. So I'll go ahead and link the YouTube videos below that I used for the biostatistics portion. For Mental Dental, you can go ahead and just search him on YouTube and you can watch his playlist for the NBDE part two exam. So when I was studying for the ADAT, I felt like there wasn't really a lot of information information out there comparing the ADAT knockout scores with the real ADAT. And so I'm going to go through each of the three sections and show you my individual practice test scores for all five practice tests in every section. And then I'm also going to show you how my average score on ADAT knockout for each of the sections compared to my real ADAT score. With that said, I would take it with a grain of salt because I think even if you're scoring a lot better than I did on ADAT knockout or even a lot worse than I did, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to reflect how you do on the real ADAT. Starting with the biomedical sciences, you can see what I got on each of the five biomedical sciences exams on ADAT knockout. I put both the score that I got out of 80 as well as the rounded percentage. I didn't actually have time to take exam five, but you can see my average biomedical sciences score was around 68%, and then my real ADAP biomedical sciences score was a 610. So take that for whatever you want it to mean. Like I said before, I don't think that there's necessarily a huge correlation between how you do on ADAT knockout and the real exam, but I would say that for this section, while there weren't really repeat questions, maybe I had like one or two at most questions that were the same or similar to ADAT knockout, I would say that a lot of the topics did repeat. So it is useful to learn the topics from ADAT knockout in order to help you prepare for the biomedical sciences portion of the exam. However, you know, it's kind of just a whole range of questions that you can be asked and you're going to get asked stuff that you never could have prepared for. And so I think it's important to remember that this exam really does emphasize more broad scope of material. And there are some super detailed picky questions that you may know or you may not know, and you just have to prepare the best that you can. But ADAT knockout definitely doesn't expose you to everything everything for the biomedical sciences portion or really for any portion of the exam for that matter. But I would say that it is pretty solid preparation for the biomedical sciences portion in terms of the type of content that you could be tested on. So here you can see how I scored on the clinical sciences portion of ADAT knockout and you can see my individual exam scores as well as the average score of 75%. So I actually did better on ADAT knockout in the clinical sciences portion portion than I did in the biomedical sciences, but on the real ADAT, I scored higher in the biomedical sciences than the clinical sciences. And I would say that on the real ADAT, the clinical sciences section definitely emphasizes cases. So they'll give you an example of a case and then sort of ask what you would do in that situation. Maybe it's a tilted abutment tooth that you're using for a bridge, or it could be a patient presents with a fractured tooth or maybe you've done a post corn crown and it came out and the patient shows up to your office and it asks, what are you gonna do in this situation? So basically just certain clinical scenarios, they incorporate pathology as well and all of the subjects in clinical sciences
differences. But I think part of why I found this section to be a little bit more difficult on the real ADAT is because I took the exam at the end of my third year of dental school. And because of COVID, everything was shut down. So I really didn't have a lot of patient experience when I took the clinical sciences portion of the exam. And I think that definitely hurt me in this section. So I think this is the one section where having some real world experience could help you get some questions right. Uh, you definitely still have to study for this section. It's not like if you've been a dentist for 10 years that you would just crush this section. But I think that having some real world experience can help you with some of the questions. So the last section is biostatistics. And you can see my individual exam scores for an average of 78%. And then on the real ADAT, I scored a 670 in this section. And I would say one big thing to note is that as you go through the ADAT knockout practice questions, that there are a lot of math questions. Whereas on the real exam, you won't have to do any of that. However, I still think ADAT knockout is really helpful for this section in terms of the concepts that you learn that you'll then apply to the actual ADAT. So I think if you go through the videos that I'm gonna put in the description and then you do all of the practice tests on ADAT knockout after that and learn from them that it really will prepare you well for the actual exam. On the real ADAT, there definitely were some questions that were unrelated to anything that I had seen before, but I would say that's definitely the exception. And most of the questions I felt like I had at least somewhat been exposed to so that I could at the very least take an educated guess. I was a little sad that there were no math questions on the actual ADAT because I found that in ADAT knockout, the math questions were honestly usually easier than most of the conceptual questions. However, I wouldn't skip out on the math questions on ADAT knockout because I think they can help solidify a lot of the concepts that you need to know for the exam. Another thing I want to point out that's kind of unique about the biostatistics portion is I think it's really the section that you can most prepare for because it has the least amount of content that is covered. So I think you have more of a chance to really master this section and to score really high in this section if you dedicate time toward it compared to some of the other areas like clinical sciences and biomedical sciences that just cover so much material that you could study an entire chapter and have none of it show up. Whereas for biostatistics, it's more limited in the scope of what it's testing. So I think that the amount of time that you put in towards studying for this section, you get more in return compared to the other sections. Obviously, you have to study for all of the sections, but I think it's something to keep in mind that you can really utilize the biostatistics section to help raise your overall score. So here you can see how my average ADAT knockout score overall compared with my actual ADAT score. So in short, I would say that ADAT knockout is harder than the real exam, but that the real exam is still pretty hard. For biomedical sciences, just remember that it's very broad in scope and you're going to have some super detailed questions and you're going to have other questions that are very general. And I think it's really important to do a comprehensive content review using some sort of book before you start delving into the questions on ADAT knockout. For clinical sciences, just remember that it's very case-based. You're still going to have some questions that are just facts, but there are a lot of cases. So you want to make sure that you can apply your knowledge. And some of those cases are going to have images and others won't. And you want to be able to answer the various clinical situations that they can give you. For bio statistics, while there's no mathematics or calculations, I still would learn how to do those just so that you learn the concepts. Overall, I think that if you go through the YouTube videos that I'm putting in the description and you also do the problems on ADAT knockout, that it'll really prepare you well for this section. Overall, studying for this exam was honestly quite stressful and I think it's important to focus on progressing every single day and making sure that you're learning something new and not trying to get too caught up in all of the information that you still don't know. Remember that you're not going to be able to learn everything. And I think that if you have an organized approach and you're constantly progressing through chapters, you're always going to make yourself more and more prepared. And rather than focusing on the stuff that you haven't looked at yet, just try to make sure that you're learning whatever topic you set for yourself for that day. Also make sure that you don't get caught up in how you're scoring on ADAT knockout. Even if you end up scoring a lot worse than I did, maybe you're getting 40% or even worse 
course, just make sure you're learning from the questions on ADAT Knockout. That's much more important than how you're scoring. I did not use the resource Crack ADAT, but you might find it helpful, so maybe look into using that resource in addition to ADAT Knockout if you feel like you want additional questions. I can't really speak on that resource because I didn't use it. Also, I want you guys to remember that the ADAT is only offered from March through August, so make sure you plan accordingly to take the exam during that time frame. Make sure you stay positive. Remember, it's going to be over soon. It was definitely tough studying for the exam, but it flies by in a weird way, and then it's over, and you can move on with your life, and I wish you guys the best of luck, and let me know if there's any other questions or video ideas that you have. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.